Hello students, Ms. Swanson here, and today we're going to take a look at covalent compounds. These are also sometimes referred to as molecular compounds or just molecules. Now, there are several important covalent compounds that we deal with on a regular basis, like water, air, carbon dioxide, and even sugar. These are all examples of covalent compounds. So we have three learning goals for today, to identify covalent compounds from their names and formulas, to determine the name of a covalent compound from its formula, and determine the formula of a covalent compound from its name. So let's start off with what covalent bonding actually is. So if you have two atoms that come together and share their electrons in order to feel like they have a full valent shell. So unlike ionic bonding where electrons are actually transferred from one atom to the other, here the electrons are actually shared. So here at the uh, picture on the right we have two um, atoms and these are both hydrogen and they come together, whoops, and so they have the electrons that are um, rotating around. They're going to come together and then share those electrons so that the red one feels like it has two electrons, a full valent shell, and the green one feels like it has two electrons, also a full valent shell. So the nonmetal plus another nonmetal, that's what happens between covalent bonding, is it's two nonmetals, never with metals. So the two nonmetals come together and share electrons. So naming and writing formulas for covalent compounds. We use prefixes to describe how many of each type of element are inside the compound. So I've written the list there of the prefixes that we use. Make sure you write these in your notes so that you know exactly which prefix to use when you're dealing with which um, different number of uh, element or different number of atoms inside that compound. So here are the rules. I'm not going to read through them, but you can write them down in your notes if you'd like to. I'm just going to go through the diagram. So you're going to start off by writing the prefix for the first non-metal, and you're going to use the subscript from the formula to decide what the prefix will be. You'll then write the name of the first non-metal. You'll then write the prefix for the second non-metal, and again you'll use the subscript to determine what that prefix will be. And then you'll write the stem of the name of the second nonmetal with IDE as a suffix. So as usual, we're adding the IDE to indicate that we're dealing with a compound. So let's take a look at a couple examples here. P4S5. So we know that the P4 kind of come together as one part and the S5 come together as another part. So we know that P stands for phosphorus and there are four of them. The S stands for sulfur and there are five of them. The prefix for four is tetra. So we have tetra and we have phosphorus. So we add those two together as tetraphosphorus. Now for the sulfur we have five, which is penta. And we add that to the sulfur. We just take the stem, which is sulf. So penta, sulf, and then we add the IDE. So we end up with tetraphosphorus pentasulfide. Let's take a look at another example. The N2 is one piece, so we have two nitrogens, and then the O3 is the other piece, we have three oxygens. So N2, we have two, which is di, and N stands for nitrogen, so di-nitrogen. We have three oxygens, so three is tri, oxygen stem is ox, and then IDE, so trioxide. So we have di-nitrogen, trioxide. Let's look at a uh, couple exceptions that we deal with here. Here we have CO2. So carbon doesn't have a subscript, it's all on its own. Now normally, if there's no subscript, that means one. And the, the uh, prefix for one is mono. However, if it is the first element that does not have a subscript, so if there's only one of the first element, we ignore that prefix mono. We only use the mono when it is the second element that has one. If it is the first element, we don't write a prefix at all. So we have carbon with just one of them and oxygen with two. So we just write carbon. Instead of monocarbon, we just write carbon. And there are two oxygens, so dioxide. So carbon dioxide. Here's another example. 
each one of the carbon and the oxygen have only one atom. So again, we start off with carbon because there's one. We don't use a prefix since it's the first atom. However, the oxygen is the second atom, and here we do use a prefix. So we use monoxide. Now, this is also a sort of exception to the rule in that oxygen sort of blends with the prefix for some of the prefix. So it's not monoxide, it's monoxide. It's not tetraoxide, it's tetroxide. Not pentaoxide, it's pentoxide, and so on. Now, there are two exceptions. Hexa and deca can be written either way. So it could be hexaoxide or hexoxide. So those are your two options, and either one is perfectly acceptable. And the same goes for deca. Now, here's another exception to the rule for covalent compounds. When you just have one element, but there are two of them, this is a covalent compound because you have two non-metals, I should say this is for your non-metals, so you have two non-metals that are sharing electrons evenly. So even though it's the same element, there are two of them coming together, and so because there are two, we call these diatomic elements. Di for two, atomic for atoms. So we would call this diatomic chlorine. We actually put the word diatomic in there and then we name the element. N2 would be diatomic nitrogen. So this is how we would name something if there's only one element but there are two of them. Now let's look at how to write the formulas. Again, you can write these rules down if you'd like to. I'm just going to go through the diagram. So you're going to write the symbol for the first nonmetal. You're then going to write the number that are required of that nonmetal. You'll use the prefix to determine what that number is. You'll then write the second nonmetal, the symbol for the second nonmetal, and then you'll write the subscript, again using the prefix to determine how many you need to write in the subscript. So here let's look at an example. Carbon tetrachloride. So carbon is our first nonmetal, and it does not have a prefix. If there's no prefix for the first element, we know that means there's one. So carbon, and we don't write uh, subscript one, so we can just leave it as C. Tetrachloride, that's our second nonmetal. Tetra is the prefix. Tetra means four, and chlorine is Cl. So we have Cl and then subscript four because of the tetra. Let's look at another example. Dinitrogen pentoxide. Dinitrogen is our first element. This comes from nitrogen and di. Di means two and nitrogen is N. So we have N, the di goes as a subscript two. And then we have pentoxide. This comes from penta and oxide. So the oxide is for oxygen, so we write our O. And penta is five, so whoops, that should be a five there, N2O5. Um, it should actually be a five because it says pentaoxide. So th that's how you would write this type of example. So we have three learning goals here today. To identify covalent compounds from their names and formulas to determine the name of a covalent compound from its formula, and to determine the formula of a covalent compound from its name. If you can do all these things, fantastic. If not, please re-watch the video, and if you're still having trouble, come ask me in class tomorrow. Alright, that's all for now. Bye-bye.